Number 9. Edward Bolin Shipwreck Namibia's Skeleton Coast is notorious for its unforgiving conditions. This 500-mile, 805-kilometer stretch of remote coastline is rife with decaying shipwrecks and animal bones that serve as an ominous reminder of how death is never too far away. News reporters once described the region as the closest that our planet can probably get to the end of the Earth. In a place where the vast ocean meets with the unforgiving desert, civilization couldn't feel any further away. Thick fog, rough seas, unpredictable currents, and heavy winds have stranded hundreds of marine vessels over the centuries, turning the skeleton coast into a de facto ship graveyard. Sailors who managed to reach land often died of thirst in the scorching desert heat. In 1909, a 310-foot-long, 95-meters cargo ship called the Edward Bolin became trapped in a fog and ran aground along this desolate area, the Skeleton Coast. Over the years, the desert encroached upon the shoreline, partially burying the wreck in the process. Today, the seemingly out-of-place vessel sits over 1,000 feet, 305 meters, from the water. It's accompanied by two nearby wrecks, the Otavi, which foundered and sank in 1945, and MV Dunedin Star, a cargo liner ran aground in 1942. These are just three of the dozens of ships that met disaster along the Skeleton Coast and now litter the shoreline as they give way to the effects of time and the harsh environment they've come to rest in. As devoid of life as the region may seem at first glance, it's actually home to numerous animals who have adapted to life in the desert, including elephants, hyenas, leopards, cheetahs, giraffes, and flamingos. There are also several marine creatures who commonly inhabit the waters offshore, including Cape fur seals and 11 different shark species. But the only other humans you're likely to see are fellow visitors and people working in the tourism industry. Number 8. Peter Grant Mansion Canada's largest house is a 65,000 square foot, 6,039 meters squared, lakefront mansion in northern Ontario. It was supposed to be the dream home and corporate office of millionaire Peter Grant, who made his fortune in the lumber industry. Construction began in 2005 with plans to install an art gallery, waterfalls, a golf course, and a squash court. The sprawling estate features two elevators, an observation lighthouse, an indoor pool, a huge hot tub, two 30-foot, 9.1 meters fireplaces, and a boathouse big enough for a 40-foot, 12.2 meters yacht. In 2007, the lumber industry faced a downturn. Not long after that, the global recession set in and the American housing market crisis forced Grant's struggling company to file for protection from creditors. Construction on the home stopped in 2008 and never resumed. It would cost just $1 million to finish building the mansion, according to the Urban Explorer blog, Talking Walls Photography. But it sits, derelict and fenced off on the shore of Timis Camming, with no trespassing signs around the perimeter. The unfinished property is an eyesore that looks more like a decrepit industrial facility than a home. It has plywood floors, unfinished walls, incomplete electrical wiring, and has been vandalized. The mansion was put up for sale in 2010 with an asking price of $25 million. A Toronto-based company bought it and installed security cameras, but did little else. It's a frustrating situation, according to Timis Camming Shores Mayor Carmen Kidd, who described the building as wasted potential in a 2018 CBC interview. Earlier this year, the reporter stated that it is unclear who the mansion's current owners are, but that they haven't paid taxes on the property in three years and are neglecting the house as it falls further into disrepair. Number 7. Roadside Mobile Home A little over a month ago, someone left a mobile home on a Texas roadside and never returned for it. Locals reported its presence to a deputy soon after it appeared, but Hockley County Sheriff Ray Cyphers was unaware of the abandoned trailer until mid-November. 
He first learned of it from staff at the local newspaper who reached out after receiving a tip from a reader. The home was left on a transport trailer next to a cotton field with an orange barrier separating it from the road. All identifying markers were stripped from the trailer, complicating law enforcement's ability to track down the owner. Cypress acknowledged that the mobile home may have been dumped illegally by someone who didn't feel like disposing of it properly, but he was careful not to jump to conclusions, pointing out that someone may have left the trailer there because they were having trouble moving it, and that the person may still be working on solving the issue. For now, police are simply waiting and hoping to find out what happened. Not long after the trailer appeared in Texas, someone abandoned a mobile home near an intersection in Greene County, Missouri. Police were left scratching their heads and they asked the public for help identifying the owner. Tips led them to a male suspect who is facing criminal charges for illegally dumping the property. Number six, Divers Palace. Poland's Lower Silesia region is famous for its castles and palaces. One of them, nicknamed the Divers Palace, stands out among the rest. Located on a farm complex, it carries an inherently spooky look and feel and is shrouded in mystery. Internet searches turn up very little information about the vacant home. According to urban explorers, Divers Palace is surrounded by buildings that are occupied. It's been abandoned since 2014 and appears to have been used for a commercial venture based on documents that were found scattered inside the home. The derelict mansion is filled with reminders of its lavish past, including velvet drapes and marble steps. There are reportedly signs of renovation work going on at the site, but it's hard to see how it would be possible to restore the structural integrity of the diver's palace, which is filled with collapsed ceilings and unstable floors. If there are any existing plans for the future of the site, nobody knows what they are. Number five, T42. While walking through the forest in Cumbria County in northwestern England, recently a photographer named Ashley Cooper spotted an afternoon tea setup in the middle of the woods. The out of place arrangement consisted of a table, two chairs, partially eaten food, and dining ware. Cooper initially thought he had stumbled upon a whimsical art exhibit, but he soon realized that wasn't the case at all. He told the BBC that the scene looked as if a couple had enjoyed a romantic meal but couldn't clean up after themselves, as if they just got up and left. Employees from nearby hotels confirmed that they had no involvement with the mysterious outdoor dine and dash scene. As Britain eases its COVID-19 lockdown restrictions, the region is experiencing a worsening problem with littering. Cooper said that over the last year and a half, he's seen numerous abandoned campsites, including tents, cooking equipment, and sleeping bags. He described the wave of people flocking to the area as a very different type of visitor who has no respect for the place whatsoever. As he pointed out, whoever set up the T for two went through the trouble of carrying the supplies a good half mile 0.8 kilometers into the woods from the nearest trail. Yet, they were unwilling to put in that same amount of effort to leave the forest as clean as they found it. But Cooper may have been a little too quick in his decision to criticize what he saw. A company called DateMate, which specializes in romantic occasions, later came forward and said that they staged the event for a vacationing couple. A spokesperson told the BBC that Cooper had discovered the scene in the short time between when the couple left and when she arrived to clean up after them. Would you consider an elaborate tea for two set up in the middle of the woods a good idea? Do you think there are other abandoned setups that are actually in the process of being cleared when they are discovered? Tell me in the comments below and make sure you also like and subscribe for more content. Number four, Dacha Kvitko. Sometime during the early 20th century, a wealthy Russian colonel named Andrei Valernovich Kavitko built a mansion in Sochi. Situated on a cliff overlooking the Black Sea, it was reportedly meant to look like a mansion in Italy that was owned by the wealthy family of Kavitko's wife. They only enjoyed the newly built home for about a year before the Russian Revolution began in 1917. Being of czarist loyalties, Kavitko knew that he was in danger he and his wife fled to Italy. 
the state took possession of their mansion and converted it into a home for troubled teens. After that, it became a vacation home. It functioned as a hospital during World War II, then became a sanatorium. Renovation work began during the late 80s, but it was never finished by the time the Soviet Union collapsed, and the money for these types of projects ran out. Since then, the house has sat abandoned and without a roof. There's been talk in recent years about fixing it up, but nothing has happened yet. The mansion is in really bad shape, and it would cost an enormous amount of money to save it. It's so damaged, in fact, that explorers are urged to use extreme caution and not to go upstairs. Number 3. Classic Car Graveyard A group of explorers who run the Lost Adventures YouTube channel recently discovered an abandoned car graveyard at an undisclosed location in England. They found the site after hearing rumors that there was a collection of cars sitting in a field. Footage captured by the team reveals dozens of vintage British-made cars, including a Porsche 924, an Aston Martin Lagonda, a Jaguar MK1, and a rare Triumph Vitesse, as well as Bentleys and Rolls Royces. Most were manufactured during the post-war era, which lasted from the late 1940s through the 50s. Some of the cars are high-end models, while others were tailored to more ordinary customers. The vehicles have been exposed to the elements for quite some time. Their conditions vary, but they all appear to be in a state of decay, and they'll only continue to rust out unless someone takes action to save them. The team was apparently in utter disbelief as they investigated the property and described the experience as unforgettable, but they didn't reveal any identifying details about the car graveyard's location or if rescuing the vehicles is a realistic prospect. Number 2. A Beachside Villa Several months ago, TikTok user Colopanza Vlogs posted footage of a crumbling villa on the shore of La Puntilla Beach in El Salvador. The video went viral and visitors flocked to the site to get a first-hand look at the ruins. There's an intact staircase inside the lopsided, graffiti-covered structure, which some visitors dare to climb, despite the warnings of danger scrawled across the interior. Some even claim that the villa is haunted by a so-called tall man. Nobody seems to know how the villa came to rest on the beach, where water flows in and out of its lower level as the tides change. Some speculate that the infamous 1998 storm known as Hurricane Mitch was responsible. It was one of history's deadliest storms, killing over 9,000 people as 75 inches, 191 centimeters of rain pounded down on the region, resulting in mudslides and flash floods that swept away entire towns. It's unclear how long the villa has been at its current location, but it's definitely possible that it's been there a while and that it was a well-kept secret among locals before it appeared on social media. Some residents said that they believe it was once a hotel called Puerto Ventura and that it was built along the beach. According to this version of events, it was abandoned around 25 years ago. A fisherman named Oscar Valencia told a local news outlet that the villa was built too deep in the beach without obtaining official permission to build. For now, the building's origins are a mystery and perhaps this is part of the appeal that's drawing people there. Number 1. Gainsthorpe There are an estimated 2,000 abandoned villages throughout England. One of them, known as Gainsthorpe, dates at least as far back as 1086, when it was listed in official records under the name Gamelsthorpe. The village was run by Ivo Tally Boys, the Lord of Gamelsthorpe. He was a powerful nobleman who rubbed elbows with William the Conqueror. In exchange for his services, he received property in Lincolnshire, where he established Gamelsthorpe. Little else is known about the historic settlement. During the late 14th and 15th centuries, it fell under the jurisdiction of the Duchy of Cornwall. Historians believe that by then, the village had shrunk considerably in size. According to historical records, it was abandoned entirely by 1616. A 17th century antiquarian named Abraham de la Prim wrote in 1697 that Gainsthorpe consisted of three abandoned streets lined with some 200 buildings. He also noted that local thieves had allegedly used the deserted village as a headquarters before residents of nearby settlements drove them away. De la Prim doubted this account, 
writing that he suspected poverty, time, and pasturage caused Gainthorpe's downfall. Nobody knows why the village was abandoned. The Black Plague may have played a role, and it's also possible that the lucrative wool farming industry drew residents elsewhere. Gainsthorpe's ruins are still visible today, although they've been obscured by time and the elements. They are easier to identify from a bird's eye view. The site contains the remnants of four roads in around 25 buildings. Archaeologists have never excavated at Gainsthorpe, which at least partially explains why there are so many unanswered questions surrounding it. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about mysterious abandoned places, let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you next time.